G'day folks. Well, a few people asked me how I went with the uh, Stromberg Carlson uh, Hassock fan, also known as room cooler as they call it. Um, as you can see, the housing and everything's cleaned up quite nicely. Still needs a little bit more of a polish, but uh, the main thing's electrical now. It has started going to ground, and it's probably due to all this old rubber flex. Uh, I took out the RCD last time I tested it, so I'm going to bypass this old terminal block which is pretty much completely unnecessary since you don't see it I'll just keep the old switch and all this stuff here I'll just make sure the wiring's pretty sturdy and safe that's all uh, pretty good material there that's insulated but I've got a feeling the problem's in there mind you there probably was some residual moisture from me washing this whole base down uh, that and I might even give it a quick coat of black just to uh, seal it well, maybe not black, uh, it's sort of a mid light goldy colour, it's hard to tell, hard to match it. Yeah, I might pull some of this off and give it a paint, but apart from that, I'm not really going to do much to it. Hell, I might just leave it as it is, leave it completely original, in its original work clothes. But I'll definitely get rid of a lot of this old rubber flex. As you can see, I've insulated these two going to the motor. These two here aren't degraded, but could be an issue. Uh, yeah. Hopefully that switch is okay. If not, I'll have to replace it. But, yeah, I'll have to uh, desolder a lot of these old wires as we go along and replace them. I'll put a modern lead on it for now until I can find some replica cloth-wrapped cable. Pretty sure RS components and a lot of old retro radio suppliers, like restorers suppliers, sell leads that look like this but a PVC inside. A uh, lot safer than this old rubber stuff, which I admit is pretty dangerous. I uh, should be able to clean up this old plug too. Made in Australia. I want to keep the Bakelite stuff, but let's get rid of this old rubber flex. Well, that's better. <laughs> Short must be in that block there. The fan blade's not particularly happy though. I'm going to do some blade straightening and balancing by the looks of it. <laughs> Mind you, it has been thrown on the ground pretty hard. I did find it in a, dumped in a scrap metal bin. At first I thought it was either a mosquito zapper or a heater, but no, it's just a fan. It's kind of interesting. It's from the uh, early 1950s, probably 1953, 56 era. But yeah, both speeds work, and uh, it's not going to ground now. You can see the Bakelite in those corners there is pretty sad, where those terminals come through. It almost looks like it's been arcing once before. But yeah, the blade, the bearings on the motor are fine. There's no lateral play in them. Of course, there's axial play, which you would anyway. It's just got a normal cup bearing in the bottom of it. But the blade itself's bent. So I'm going to try and straighten that up and uh, refit it to its casing. I'll just put a cable clamp or something there and run that out through the bottom. The cables just come out through here, so there's no no need for a gland or anything like that. Actually, no, I can't put a cable clamp there because that's where my threaded rod for the foot goes. But either way, I'll find a place to put it. Might even put a cable gland in there, take this block and everything off. Well, straightening fan blades can be pretty tricky, but I'll give you a little trick on how to do it. You don't need an uh, expensive or old base like this one. It's an old machinist's indicator base, more and right. And uh, not everyone has them, but they're uh, quite handy for this sort of job. Or you can make your own, just even by sticking a rigid piece of wire in the vise and just bending it over. You just want to indicate the tops and the tips and everything and just get it to a happy medium because you can bend the blades up and down and you can also twist them so there's a it takes a while but you can get these blades pretty straight like you can see there's a gap there between the wire and the blade that one there's touching that one's touching so my wire indicator is a little bit high let's tighten that up actually yeah, make sure the indicator doesn't move, but set it 
as close to the blade as possible and you get an idea of how much gap there is. So you can see that blade there, it's almost you can almost see the bend in it, it's pretty low. So bring that up a little bit. And bring the wire down a little bit. So that's almost touching that one. It's really almost touching that one. Yeah, so without bending the blades myself by touching them actually, I should be turning it by the hub. So the gap. Getting closer. Really close. Really close. So these two here just need a tiny bit of tweaking upwards and then I'll just spin it with power, spin it under power, visually inspect it again and if it seems to be running alright we'll leave it, if not sometimes you can also twist the blade a little bit particularly if the bottom edge isn't running true again you can sort of twist it and bend it up and down at the same time It's once they're really bent out of whack it's really hard to get them straight, perfectly straight again but you can get them pretty close and again you could just as easily mount a piece of wire like that in a vise or clamp it to the side of the wall or whatever, there's plenty of ways of doing it, you just want a good reference point so you just want something completely rigid, whatever it may be, even a screwdriver like that mounted in a vise. Just make a reference point and work off that. But for this purpose I just use an indicator base and a piece of wire, which in this case looks like bronze. So it does just fine. One blade's particularly high, like within half a millimetre. The other one's a tiny bit lower, but the other one, other two are noticeably lower. So I'm going to try tweaking them a bit and give it, give it another test run. Well, it's certainly a lot better. It's not trying to jump around on the table anymore. It's not vibrating either. And with the mass of that attached to it, you won't feel any vibration. I'll give it one last tweak. I can see a slight fluctuation in the uh, blade movement there but the camera's not even picking it up it's so minute hell I might just leave it as it is give the bearing one last oil and finalize this wiring but yeah it should be a nice little uh, fan it certainly moves a bit of air that's on high speed You can see a bit of a flutter in the blade movement and that's just a slight. I think it's more the light bouncing off the blades because they're twisted ever so slightly different and the light up there is giving a really bad indication of how straight this blade is because it's a lot better than it looks. Yeah, most of it's light reflection. Anyway, I think that's about all for now. I'm going to uh, finalise this and put it back together again. Yeah, the casing assembly is pretty easy on these. You have through bolts going all the way through, or threaded rod, which goes up to here, I think, or threads into there, and uh, little wooden discs. It's nice to see making appliances out of steel, aluminum, and wood. I think there's pretty much no plastic in it, a bit of bakelite and other primitive materials, but no plastic casings like today's fans. Funny thing is today's fans don't even last more than 12 months before they fall to bits or blow their motor. Little footsies. I ended up cable tying that cable to the motor mount. You can't even see it from the outside but it's a uh, cable tied to the one of the support brackets of the motor and looped back around so it does get tugged on it doesn't tug on the terminals on the strip so that's all good that's high low yep fast slow there's no official on off switch apart from the one on the wall plug it in it starts you can select between high and low and that's it so yeah I got most of the dents out of the casing too it was very dented I did find it in a bin full of scrap metal. I was about to chuck about 500 pounds of scrap metal on top of it until I realised, oh, that looks kind of unusual. It looks, sort of looks like a heater or something. Sure enough, it was well worth dragging out of that bin. Well worth it. 
It's hard to see that, but it says Stromberg Carlson number 28395, 240 volts, 0.34 amps, 50 cycles AC, so 50 hertz, 50 cycles per second. Okay, and that's the finished thing. Worked pretty good too. Uh, the centre is not quite on centre yet, I've still got to tweak those supports. All this is bent too, and you can see I've got to replace these cap screws with something more authentic, but for now I've used new screws because all the holes are stripped or mangled or missing. But that's uh, in good working order now. It actually works quite well. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I'll use this in summertime. Anywho, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.